What's up guys, Jake here with Jake Scott Herps, not to be confused with Herpes, Herpes is nasty, and this is Tim Tebow, my American Alligator. I normally don't show Tebow a whole lot in my videos because I don't really want people to, you know, go out and get alligators, I don't think it's a very good idea. Uh, with their large adult sizes, very powerful jaws, and, uh, you know, they're just very strong animals in general. And uh, they live a long time, and they have a lot of qualities that make them, you know, not very good pets. Um... But I haven't made an alligator update in a while, and I have gotten quite a few subscribers since then, uh, which I'd like to thank you guys for. Uh, so I figured I'd do that now. So Tebow here, he obviously got his name from Tim Tebow, the American football player who went to the University of Florida, and Florida's mascot is the Gators. So I think his name is quite appropriate. He's around two years old. Uh, he's 33 inches long. I don't know how much he weighs, although he's getting quite girthy, as you can see. He's got a pretty big gut because he does eat a lot. Um, but I would imagine that he's in the ballpark of two to three pounds at the moment, although that'll change here, here pretty shortly in the upcoming months. People ask me a lot how large I think he'll be when he's an adult, and it's tough to say because alligators' uh, lengths, you know, vary quite a lot, obviously, depending on, you know, what the temperature is, you know, how much they eat, and this is like all wild factors too, not just captivity, but, you know, an alligator that's in a, an area that's hotter will obviously grow a lot faster and will have a higher metabolism um, but and also another thing that makes that tough to uh, to know is he was purchased as a quote-unquote dwarf which all that means is his parents were you know below average size alligators and although it's not really a foolproof way of determining how large your alligators are going to be because obviously if two you know humans have a kid and their kid can end up being 6'8", even though both of them are, you know, 5'8". So it's really not 100% accurate. Although, if I had to take a guess, I'd imagine he'll probably be around, you know, 10 plus feet if he is a male. And, you know, 7 to 8 feet if he's a female. That's pretty much just a ballpark guess at this point. I haven't sexed him or anything. But I think that'd be a pretty accurate guess. His enclosure is a 6x4 acrylic tank. Uh, acrylic works really well for these alligators because uh, things like melamine and wood obviously aren't waterproof. Um, so it works really well containing uh, water in the land area. The land area itself, uh, I don't use gravel or rocks or anything like you would normally use for a semi-aquatic animal like a turtle or you know a fire belly toad or something because obviously it's acrylic and it will bend and it would be extremely heavy with the rocks so uh, not a good idea. Basically the land platform is just sitting on... Uh, on some wood, it's just a little platform. Um, the land area itself is uh, astroturf with some slate rocks to help absorb some heat, and uh, the water is probably around six inches deep, which is fine for him. He actually has to stand on his tiptoes to uh, reach the bottom, and he can submerge very easily. And I've always kept my water kind of low. You guys always kind of, I always get picked on for that, and the reason for that is it's a lot cleaner. Not just because um, you know it's easier to get to the actual poop, but there is a pump that circulates the uh, the waste and it gets pretty much in the center so it's really easy to siphon out and when it's not as you can see it gets kind of scattered all over the place don't let this fool you uh, that little itty bit of you know poop right there that's probably a small fraction of what I actually just had to clean out I usually have to take like three or four you know five gallon buckets of poop uh, up the stairs and dump it in the toilet so it's definitely they definitely produce quite a bit of waste, and the filter does its job. It could probably use a bigger filter, but uh, he does produce quite a lot of poop. Uh, that's one you know, trait of an alligator. And uh, what he eats, he actually eats a uh, Missouri crocodilian diet. I know a lot of people feed their large crocodilians and you know monitors and stuff like that, uh, mice and fish and those kind of things. And those things are all fine, but... Um, one, they don't really contribute to a very calm temper if you feed live. You know, uh, an alligator or anything really that's used to feeding live will generally associate, uh, you know, movement with food. And this stuff obviously doesn't move on its own. And also, it's really convenient. It has all the nutrients and stuff that they need. You don't really have to mix up the diet a whole lot by feeding, you know, one day you'll have to feed mice, one day you'll feed, like, insects. You know, you get everything you need in this diet, and it's also more lean, it doesn't have a lot of fat that a mice or a rat would have, and it's just very convenient. Uh, you can get this dyed in like 50 pound bags, and I haven't run out since I've had him. Um, and they also make the diet in like like baseball diameter, you know, size pieces like that, so when he is bigger, he'll uh, still be eating this stuff. Some people don't think it's all that natural, but to be perfectly honest, um, 
nothing about keeping any animal in captivity is like it is in the wild. So, uh, it, you know, you can do things that aren't, you know, quote unquote natural. Uh, so, you know, that's all, that's all good. He's actually a pretty tame alligator, and part of the reason is because he eats that diet, like I just said, but also because I handle him quite a lot. Uh, if you want any animal to be tame, the best way to do it is just to handle it. Even if it's mean, um, you know, you gotta sometimes just tough it out and handle him. Well, he was pretty nice when uh, I got him, you know, fa fairly docile. Alligators in general aren't really the, all that aggressive, at least from my experience. They're a lot more defensive. Things like caimans and crocs will definitely be a lot more aggressive than alligators. So uh, he was he was alright when I got him, but uh, he's he's fairly docile. You know, I wouldn't trust him to just let him run around like uh, free roaming tegu or anything but uh i do handle him quite frequently and uh, he, he usually doesn't give me any trouble he never attempts to bite me or anything i still keep my guard up though because you'll never know what can happen and you don't want to uh let your guard down when you have you know a 10 foot alligator it's just a good habit and uh, one thing about alligators and uh you know monitor lizards and any large reptile is that they're all really really smart you know um Things like tegus and monitors, you see a lot of them that are basically like dogs. And the reason for that is even in their tiny little brains, they have an organ called the cerebral cortex. And basically all that does is it, it basically like the learning organ of the brain. And it lets them you know, learn trends and patterns and stuff. And uh, so that, that's what attributes to alligators and you know, tegus and things like that being very intelligent. Uh, more so than a gecko or like a bearded dragon. Not saying that they're completely dumb, but those animals are a lot more instinctive, is where alligators are still pretty extinct, instinctive, but um, they uh, do learn patterns and trends and stuff. And so, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this update. If I missed anything, you know, ask it in the comments. I usually re reply to all my comments, except for recently because my computer uh, kind of broke, so I'm doing this off from my iPhone, but... Uh, yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a rating. It helps me out a ton. And subscribe if you want to see more videos. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.